The investigation is now looking at Flight 370's pilots. Officials tell our Bob, Bob Orr that the crew could have shut off the device that reports the plane's position. Investigators also considering the possibility of a deliberate crash. With us now in Studio 57, Captain Sully Sullenberger, known for the miracle on the Hudson landing. He is CBS News' aviation safety expert. Good morning. Good morning, Charlie. No Looking at all this and all the flying experience you have, what does your instinct say to you and what is the baffling about this and what are the contradictions that puzzle you? Well, what's so frustrating for all of us, and I can only imagine how frustrating for the families of the passengers and crew, is that we really don't know very much. There is no hard evidence. We have not found any wreckage. We have not recovered and analyzed the reporters. And until we do, we're going to have many more questions and answers. But okay. ultimately, we will find them. One thing you do know is what it's like to be in there under stress. Is it unlikely under stress a pilot would issue a distress call? The situation that they faced may have been so overwhelming, and their higher priorities of flying the airplane and trying to solve the many problems they faced are higher priorities than just communicating that they would have done later had they had the opportunity to. So the fact that they didn't indicates to me that they were either unable to or, or too busy to until they couldn't. What interests me is how is it that a Boeing 777 could veer 100 miles off course and not anybody know about it? You have to remember this is in a part of the world where it's open water, it's in the middle of the night, uh, not very good radar coverage from ground-based radar facilities. Uh, so this information of the other flight path is unconfirmed. It's based upon, I believe, some intermittent uh, reception from military radars. Much more analysis of this needs to be done until they establish a good datum, a reference point for the search. They'll be doing what they are doing now and searching many areas over tens of thousands of square miles of ocean. That's going to be time consuming and, and mm -hmm. frustrating. One of the things we're learning is about the transponder signal being turned off. Can you imagine under any circumstances that a pilot would willingly or intentionally do that? There really are very few reasons ever to do that unless mm -hmm. In the cockpit, you smell an electrical smell and you see smoke coming out of the device itself. You would want to turn it off and remove the power from it to prevent a fire. But uh, absent that, you know, if a possible electrical failure of the airplane was one possible solution. But again, absent hard data, we're just guessing. Does anything, though, seem to be more accurate than others to you? I mean, you, we only, we're at the mercy of what they tell us. And they've told us very little. Yeah. This is a huge contrast, for example, with the Asiana 214 crash right. in San Francisco just last July 6th, where much was known very early. But then we had the huge advantage then of having the entire airplane on dry land on an airport. The recorders were recovered very quickly. The crew survived to be interviewed. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew within hours and days much of what we thought was going to happen. It's also important to say that after uh, 45 years of flying and 30 years as an airline pilot and, and 20 years as an accident investigator, our first guesses are often wrong. Mm -hmm. I can cite you chapter and verse of how many accident investigations initially the speculation or the, or the interest was in one particular area and it was wrong and we ended up going somewhere else. So it, we need to keep an open mind. We have to say that absent data basically all causes should still be on the table. Yeah, it's just so painful and troubling and certainly continuing, and we are all over it. Thank you very much, Captain Sully. Great to be with Good you. Good to see you.